Hello, how you doing Mike Bradley? I hope you're doing well as always. So, the number one big question I get on YouTube. Actually, probably number two, because the number one big question is, how do I do my hair? <laughs> but in all seriousness, the big question I get asked all the time uh, is, how do I get to be good at the guitar? You know what I mean? Like, how did you get to be good at guitar? And that's very nice that anyone would say that because you know, I'm still trying to be good at the guitar. And I understand it, and I feel the the problem we, we have in this day and age is that we're in such a, an instant world, aren't we now? You know, everything's very instant. And I've mentioned this a few times, I think, in, in uh, on YouTube, you know, in videos and live streams and things. When you watch this video, there was probably an advert before it, and you had to wait about five seconds for a skip now button to come up, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, come on, let me skip it. Let me skip it, you know, and it's the same with life and the same with guitar. Um, you know, I think people play for about sometimes six weeks and expect to be able to play like Eric Clapton or something. And it's like, well, it doesn't quite work out that way. Now, the other day I stumbled across this folder, this folder, which is my old guitar lesson folder. And I wanted just to kind of show you and talk you through how I have become the guitar player I am. And um, it's, it's very interesting kind of looking back, uh, you know, something which is 22 years old now and uh, seeing how it was for me. And there might be some little surprises in it for you uh, and you might be shocked hearing some stuff. So let's have a little look through my old guitar lesson folder. So here we have it my guitar folder um, and you can see from the writing here I don't know if that's gonna zoom in there but that's saying guitar lesson folder that is a very old I've probably written about 20 years ago something like that so this is nearly in order of how I you know learnt kind of stuff obviously some things got moved around a little bit but the first thing here you can see the notes on the neck uh, this is all handwritten my, my teacher was a guy called Alan Pinches God bless him he's passed away now um, and if I kind of go through it, I've got my kind of basic bar chords, um, which I would have got a bit later on. I would have got that. Um, and then we've got our basic chord construction, bar chord practice, uh, major type major, minor seventh, minor seventh major, or sorry, major seventh, minor seventh. Uh, now this I remember getting very early on, probably like lesson two or three, your basic open chords. And I still kind of do this exact same thing really. Uh, with my pupils. So you've got your open chords there. And then I remember getting this in the first lesson, yeah. So practice bars and uh, Ferris Jacker. Uh, play the on beats as down strokes and the off beats as up strokes. Uh, Call the off beats and. There we go. I would not have understood that when I was 12 years old. Uh, and then we've got kind of our open chords using tonic and dominance. Uh, the boom, chat, boom, chat, boom, chat, boom, chat, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, what's this here? The tonic is the root of the chord. The tonic always comes first. The tonic is the same name as the chord. So then I've got tonic A, dominant E, tonic B, F sharp, etc., etc. Oh, these are arpeggios. You can see this is slightly newer paper. I mean, I, I stopped having lessons with them in 2000, started in 1996. Um, so I was looking at some arpeggios. Uh, crossroads from the Steve I Crossroads. Obviously, I'll start learning that. Uh, I remember getting this in my first lesson, so this I, I learned music with him, reading music. And I didn't learn it as kind of eighth notes or sixteenth note quavers or anything like that. Uh, I learned, you know, four beats to a bar, being a semi-brief, a minimum, crotchet, quaver, you know, so very theory. You're, you're getting the idea here, it was very theory-led, my, my guitar lessons. Oh, Alan Pinches, 647, he put his phone number, bless him. Yeah, so I already got this in the first lesson, wow. Uh, remembering notes are how to read music, every good boy deserves food and face for F-A-C-E. Um, and then the first thing I ever learnt was Farah Jacka. And that is a little blues riff. All using crotchets, you know. Also play as quavers, straight or swing feel. Uh, accents, sharps or flats. Um, then I learnt the fifth interval, and he's put in brackets, power chord. Um, play from the bottom string or the fifth string and taking its name from the lowest note, thus, okay. 
And then he said, try this sequence, F, B flat, uh, A flat, D flat, which is smells like Teen Spirit. You would have taught me that. Uh, ah, so this is one of the first chords uh, progressions I ever learned, which I asked him to teach me. And uh, he hasn't wrote the name, but it's about a girl uh, by Nirvana from the Unplugged album. Uh, and then I wouldn't have known about, I remember trying to do this C sharp and F sharp, the kind of power chord shapes, and I just couldn't do it. Uh, then he's taught me happy birthday. <laughs> uh, and he's put two, tonic and two chords per bar. Okay. Um, and that's learning the lower notes. The man who sold the world. Again, Nirvana. This is a blues tune. So you're seeing here, none of this is tab. Alan didn't believe in tab. Um, I think he said it was like looking at a wall. It's pointless. So he would only teach me... Um, music, you know, sight reading. Um, <clears throat> and I, you know, I got all right at it, but uh, actually, uh, no, I, I, I got by. Uh, I was never a good reader, but and I haven't read properly in a long time, a long, long time. But all my lessons was reading, it always was. And I'll get to that in a minute, because he would literally, I'd start my guitar lessons and he'd be like, let's do some reading today. You know, it was like that. Uh, string crossing exercise. Uh, it's another blues tune. I can't remember that. Roll With It by Oasis. Uh, Welcome Home. I remember doing that by um, Metallica. Julian Banjos. Ah, so here we go. The timing again. So he did all, a lot of this. Did a lot of just literally playing one single note. I'm going to get a guitar. I'll be playing like one single note, like an A and, you know, so... You know, just doing different rhythms on that. The sharps and flats in all the keys. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I remember him writing that out. So, uh, well, you can see there, you know. So in C sharp, you, you sort of think sharp there, isn't it? You know. Um, and then this is the cycle of fourths. And then, so I remember my sharps and stuff, you know. So G's got one sharp in it. D's got two, etc., etc. You know, and then the flats. Um, so, yep, this is all very... Th so now I'm probably a few months into playing now. Uh, why doesn't G... Sh now, <clears throat> some things uh, I question a little bit now. Um, like So here he's got, why doesn't G sharp exist as a scale? And he's got F would need a double sharp and things like that, which I understand a little bit. Transposition, if... Two scale shapes the same letter, i.e. C and C sharp or D or D flat. The reading is potentially the same. Well, but yeah, it means, okay, so he's got it as D or in D flat. Uh, I see what you mean. Scale information, shapes three, four, and five all start from the same root point. So, you know, I've, I mean, it's a bit weird looking at it now, you know, not looking at it in 20 years. The six scales in the fifth position, Scale of C, shape three, just a little stuff. That would be some reading practice I would have done there. Uh, remember, uh, what's that? Recognizing the scale notes. Ah, oh, on oh, no, a three, but oh, I don't remember that now. No, it's not what I thought it was. So, this is a major scale. What's this? Shape three in the key of B flat. Uh, or G as well. Um, starting scale. So, you're, yeah, you're seeing it's very, very. Very, and he repeat himself a lot as well. I'll get there and then, like here, like you're seeing some more sharps and keys and be like, oh, I've done that already, you know, but I was so shy, I just didn't say nothing. So this is your major scale shapes. Um, your standard one, shape two, and he's done this in the key of B flat, but of course it's all movable. Shape three and A, uh, shape four and G. Don't forget to play the notes of a legato sound, all joined together with no gaps between. Uh, I did this in the key of F. Um, so yeah, lots of different shapes here. Shape, uh, ah, then, so what we know as shape one pentatonic, I learned that as shape three. <laughs> it was a little bit, he said that there was no room for shape two. So I learned the five positions of the pentatonic as shape one three, four, five, and six. 
Uh, and he's got here, there is no room for a pentatonic shape between shape one and three. The major scale number two spreads up from the front. So it basically, he was, he was incorporating the major scale and the pentatonics and saying there wasn't enough room. So I understand what he means. It's just very confusing in, in a contemporary form. How to construct the scale. Uh, Torendo, so I don't remember that. This is the major scale. Sees us all your five positions. So, you know, I would have been playing at this point for what's this practice routine? Five to ten minutes scales down and ups. Five to ten minutes tunes. Five to ten minutes chords changing tonic and dominance. Five to ten minutes riff. Five to ten minutes anything else. I'm gonna be writing that. Some more little riffs you would just write out for me. Uh, Scarborough Fair. Just the timing. Um, solo, blue, that's a little blue thing. Purple Haze in music. All right now. Um, so, you know, by this point, I've been playing for a good year or so. And there's no licks. There's no pentatonics at this point, really. Uh, well, not really. That was obviously out of order, what I was just talking about a minute ago. You know, it's very theory-based, incredibly. Uh, Johnny B. Good. This tune is a 12 bar blue, so you just write out these chords. Um, so it's amazing when I think back that I stuck with it. Um, you know, because I didn't have YouTube, I didn't have anything like that. Uh, Wonderwall. Um, so it's, you know, I just had a drive in me wanting to play the guitar, but this was all I knew was just, you know, I suppose a, theoret a theoretical. Uh, point of view of learning the guitar and then I remember for my 13th birthday I got um, uh, a guitar magazine total guitar magazine and then I started getting guitar magazines pretty much once a month that way um, and I started just seeing other players you know uh, I remember I, would, I went to the guitar show in 1997 or maybe 98 I can't remember and uh I heard about the ACM in Guildford and I wanted to go there and there was a student got up and he was like playing behind his head and I was like, oh my God, it's amazing. And then this guy got up uh, with a little, well, actually what I've got now, a little goatee beard thing going, hair and a ponytail and just blazing it. I was like, who is this guy, man? This is incredible. And that guy was Guffy Govan. He was probably about 27 years old at the time. So I remember going to my lesson saying, Alan, like this guy's playing behind his head. Uh, and he was like, well, I can do that. And he just, you know, it's not like, like if someone said that to me, I'd be like, amazing, who was it? Let's find, you know, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, he, he could be a little bit harsh at times, you know, but he's a, he was a lovely guy, but yeah, he could be a little bit harsh and bitter. I remember saying, Jimmy Page, talking about him once, saying he was a big session guy. He's like, he's not a session guy. Why? Because he's got two, two necks, it makes him a session guitar player. I was like, well, yeah, he played on like, the Kinks album and Tom Jones and, you know. So, uh, yeah, I remember him saying to me as well, if you're a session, because he was a session guy, and he said, if you're a session player, uh, you can't be famous and stuff like that. And it was just, yeah, he was, he was a funny old boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we're getting a lot. What is the natural minor? A minor, a minor scale of no altered notes. Minor scale, so it's a relative minor note, the sixth note of the scale. Yeah, so if you're in the key of C major, sixth note of that is A. So A minor is the uh, same as C. Again, same old stuff here again. Uh, it is funny, like I say, looking back thinking, how did I stick with this? Because, you know, I think if I did this to someone, they'd be bored out of their mind. Load of qua semi quavers work here. So again, I would have been playing one note. Um, da 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 you know I would have been just doing that on one note doing the different rhythms and things one two three four one two three four da 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 um, yeah, so C, F, and G, D, G, and A, all that kind of stuff. Again, you're not seeing any licks here, are you? So this is the blue scale I learned. I learned it as the blue scale. I didn't learn it as pentatonics. It was blue scale. Um, and he's put brackets indicate blues notes. Um, and then we'll see this blue scale, lead, C, A minor, 
rhythm C. So all these different things here, pentatonic theory. So rhythm and minor chord sound, lead, minor pentatonic, jazzy blues. Rhythm, major chord sounds, lead, major pentatonic, light blues, country. Uh, blues hates thirds. I don't agree with that, Alan. Uh, blues love thirds because it's all about defining the thirds for that kind of cool bluesy sound, the minor third, major third. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that now uh, whatsoever. <laughs> Not now, I don't agree with it. So some more blues theory. So yeah, at this point, I reckon I've been playing two years, I reckon, at this point, I've been playing for now. Um, oh, minor seven flat five chords. There you go. Walk, now, again, this is another example. Let's do some reading. So this is walking in the air. If you're from the... Sorry if you can hear a hoover, by the way. Someone's hoovering downstairs. Um, but um, walking in the air, Christmas song from the snowman. Um, da, 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 so I'd have been reading that, then doing the chords of it. More of this, Fields of Gold by Sting. Da, 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 da. You know, so I'd have been playing that. Uh, Junin banjos with a bass line. Dung, dak, dung, dak, dung, dak, dung, dak. Uh, Tears in Heaven, he's done this in the key of C though, but I didn't learn it as the, da, 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 da. you know, it would have been, Da, 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 da. You know, I've been playing the notes, so I would have been going, oh, let's, let's read for the first time in a long time. It would have been doing that, you know. So, Memory by Andrew Lloyd Webber. Uh, theme from the New World Symphony. Katana, Watermelon Man. I remember really liking playing that. Da, 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 da. I used to really enjoy playing that. Uh, dream, 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 dream. So this is all written music, all right? Open sequences. Uh, oh, we learned Salt and the Swing. We spent ages on this, ages. Uh, and I remember the, the bit at the end, you know. I did it with a pick. Um, I haven't got a pick, where are we going? So I did it with a pick going, and then veggie. And I was like, it doesn't sound like the record. I didn't really understand about legato or um, finger picking, that he was finger picking it. I just used the pick all the time. Um, and then eventually I think I, I read somewhere in a guitar magazine that he used his fingers. A stare at a heaven, that spent a long time on that. Uh, and that's a solo which I back then could read all right. Hotel California, Finger Style Blue. So yeah, now we're doing kind of songs, but this is like three years now in uh, of playing. More reading studies, uh, diminished chords, and a big lot of theory down on diminished chords and stuff. So it's, uh, it's quite a trip to be honest, looking back at all this. And you know, it did set me on my way massively because you know even though i might not consciously think where the theory came from you know when i look back at this i'm like wow man i, I really i was really put for my paces on the theory here um you know more so really than a technical thing on playing of course we would have looked at technical stuff in playing but uh, in the lessons and stuff and obviously through playing i, I was working on it but you know it weren't till later really when i would sit and work on picking exercises. I went, so I was about 16 and I went to the ACM, I would start doing stuff like that. It was just playing music. It was playing, you know, simple melody notes on the guitar and making the note count, you know, making it sing. And it was a lot of it when I was um, learning, you know, when I was reading, I'd be reading around this position. All right, sorry, I'm not looking at the lens. I keep looking at that. Um, so, you know, I would get used to just, you know, that vibrato, that's how it came really, I guess now, thinking about it, you know, I was trying to make it sing out like a vocalist. Um, so we're going Bon Jovi always. 
Uh, dominant seven, sharp nine, or flat 10. Sharp nine, Alan. Uh, God save the queen. <laughs> when you say nothing at all, the Ronan Keating. Doing that. More metronome studies. There we go. Quavers. Quaver triplets. Fast triplets. Semi quavers. Demi semi quavers. Offbeat quavers. Um, so, yeah, a lot of. A lot of theory, Titanic. So this is 1998 now. Um, so yeah, 98, 99. So yeah, two, three years of playing. Um, oh, Lady Be Good, that's a jazz standard. Hotel California Solo, ET. Now, I remember you talking about the modes, obviously, in quite depth here, uh, as you're seeing on the, the main cam here. Mode chart, wow, look at that. Uh, I didn't really understand it for a long time, the modes. Uh, it probably was, it would have been two or three years after learning this that it kind of clicked. Cause I remember thinking, no, it's got to be easier than that. Yeah, sorry, it's got to be harder than that. It can't be that simple. Uh, I've got a lesson on the modes on my website, I'm sure, just not my website, sorry, well, on my website and on YouTube, which I'm sure is popping up as a card now. Uh, modes in the key of six. Wow, look at that. Major and relative minor harmony. Yes, that's basically the harmonized major scale. Major, minor, minor, mate. So again, <laughs> but I want to go to the end here to show you. Um, hey Joe, 12 bar blues in A. Um, but this is kind of how I cut my teeth. Augmented chords, time signatures. Um, simple time where the beat can devise a compound time. Um, yeah, 12, eight time, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The Turkish Rondo. Now this, I learned the Turkish Rondo. I remember again, so when I was saying about when I saw someone play behind their head and I was telling him about it, I saw Paul Gilbert at this, this same guitar show again. So it would have been 98, 1999. And um, he was, um, he did two become one, I remember, then he did to become one meets a stare at a heaven solo with uh, a black Sabbath riff. And it was great. Uh, and then he did this classical piece, which I can't for life me remember what it was. And then, so I told Alan about this. I was like, oh, this guy, Paul Gilbert, he was in an orange suit, you know, he was amazing, blah, blah. And he did this like classical thing. And he's like, well, we could do that. I was like, oh, okay. And he says, is it this? And he played Turkish Rondo. I was like, uh, and it wasn't that but I was too shy to say no. So I was like, oh, something like that. And he said, there's no something like that. It's either that or it's not. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, then it must've been that. You know? <laughs> and so then we learned the Turkish Rondo. There's literally pages of this. There's, uh, uh, yeah, one, another page underneath. And yeah, so two pages, sorry, beg your pardon. You know, so in case you don't know what the Turkish Rondo is, so I'm not plugged in, but. It's that. Uh, so we did that, Smooth Santana. So again, yeah, 1999 that came out, I remember. Um, just more theory, Satin Doll, what's this? Five, the, oh, two, five, one sequences. <clears throat> wow, A minor seven, hopefully the camera's seen that um, in the kind of jazzy way, which I do all the time now. I wouldn't have clicked back then. Uh, minor scales, so we started looking at them. I think I remember saying to him, I asked him about that. I was like, what's a minor scale? Um, and the harmonic minor. So the I remember the last thing I kind of learned with him before I left was, yeah, the harm harmonic minor scales. Um, and then I, then I and then he started talking about the melodic minor, there I see. Um, and then I left to go to the ACM, which he wasn't very happy about. Again, I'm painting him as a bad picture here. He's all what you think of the, a lot of times, the, the funny things or the negative things, don't you? And there we have it. That's, uh, like I say, uh, eight, nine, that's, you know, four years of guitar lessons right here. Um, it's, and, you know, one would maybe look at that as quite intense. You know, I went every week, Monday at four o'clock was, um, was my guitar lessons. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, that's how I've kind of learned. You know, I learned literally the old fashioned way of, you know, working your way up, not looking at any kind of 
pentatonics or blues stuff or rock guitar. That's the thing. Like he, um, I didn't know at the time. Now I understand it. I was plugged into a PA speaker, so I would get to his. He had like a big kind of. Uh, I don't know if it was a, no, it can't have been a 12 inch. It must have been two, a two by 12 inch speaker cab. And then he had like, uh, like a head thing on top, which you, you had like four, no, about 12 inputs on it, which is obviously a PA kind of head. And we'd go into that, no reverb, no nothing, never played with any overdrive, no distortion. He had a Gibson 335, he had a Telecaster, and he had a Chet Atkins um, Gibson classical guitar as well. Um, and that was my lesson, you know. Uh, I remember getting this uh, when I was having lessons with him uh, and my Pacifica and I, my first electric guitar was a Telecaster, which I no longer have. And then of course my classical guitar, my first guitar. Um, and yeah, go there every week. And you know, this, I knew no different. You know, now of course of YouTube and if I was you no know, put on YouTube and you see someone like Paul Gilbert blazing it, I'd be like, I want to do that. Now obviously I saw Paul Gilbert at the guitar show, but that was a flash in the pan. I saw him, because prior to that, I thought, you know, obviously I had Alan as my guitar teacher, and I thought contemporary-wise, Noel Gallagher was the best guitar teacher in the world, uh, the best guitarist in the world, because he was the, you know, in the biggest band, in the, certainly in the UK at that time, Oasis. And so, weren't so I went to the guitar shows and see Guthrie and Paul Gilbert and that. I was like, wait a minute, Noel Gallagher doesn't, he doesn't do that. So, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, would I be a different player if I started playing, if I was 12 years old starting today and then in 22, 22 years time, would I be the same type of player? No way, no. Um, you know, uh, so I'm kind of glad I went this way, you know, the, the long route to kind of get there. Um, so don't, basically, if you get anything from this little video or long video probably, don't beat yourself up. If you've been playing, say, for two, three, four years and you're not where you think you should be, don't worry about it. There shouldn't, and that should be like in life, man, you know, but, you know, just because you haven't reached where you think you should be on the, the destination map as a musician or as a guitar player, like, there's no, there's no race for it. Everyone's different. What you might find easy, someone else will find hard and vice versa and stuff, you know, so... Yeah, it's interesting, but I'm gonna sign out here because uh, it's been a long old uh, <laughs> video as it is, but hopefully you, you kind of got something from this, and uh, I guess as well as it's cool to share a little bit about more about me and where I've come from as a, as a guitar player and as a musician. And uh, let me know your thoughts, guys, you know? So uh, I, I will dedicate this to Adam Pinches. Like I say, I might have painted him off in a, in a bad light here, but he was a lovely guy, he really was. Um, and and I, I miss him a lot and uh, like I say, unfortunately he's passed away now. So uh, I'm gonna sign off my little vlog camera here and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How did you start, you know, kind of uh, with the guitar? Did you, are you an older chap or, or chapess? <laughs> an older lady who, uh, you know, has been uh, playing for a while and kind of had the record player going and stuff like that. I mean, that's another thing I should say, because. I could not work songs out by ear, and I would take smooth, what you saw, take that in on a cassette, because he didn't have a CD, and then he would listen to it, and then he would, he, he would just get the chords and, you know, show me the lead line and stuff, you know, straight off the bat. And I remember him trying to get me to sing. I said to him, how do you play, you know, by ear and stuff? How do you work things out by ear? And he was saying about finding the bass note and humming the notes and things and would get me singing trying to hum notes and when you're 12 13 14 years old and you're super shy the last thing you want to do is sing in front of someone so and if you are shy trying to sing if you're la but la there's the note but if you're shy uh, uh, you know and you're no pubescent <laughs> with your voice breaking wasn't pretty wasn't pretty at all but um, anyway, thanks very much, guys. And uh, oh, I'll see you very, very soon. Mike Bradley and his big tripod signing out. See you soon. <laughs>